that is a Captain America shield you see back there, and it's a backpack. Oh, nice. And it's awesome. It used to, it actually was always on the show because it used to hang on the back of my old chair, but you couldn't see it. But Dan bought us absurdly large office chairs. They're comfortable. Fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) They're like way too big for this room. And like, if he moves, my chair moves. And I keep trying to tell him they're too big, but he won't listen to me. So my my cap backpack doesn't fit anymore. So, so I before we get cranked up tonight, and you might be interested in these two. I wanted to talk about these. I got these nice new um, monitor in ear headphones. Ooh, from, I like uh, the hook over earbuds. Yeah. Because I have absurdly small ear com- ear canals. Apparently, absurdly is the adjective of the day. Um, I have really small ear canals, and earbuds fall out. So I like those little hook things on them. These are from Amazon. These were about 20 bucks. All right. And these are these nice metal in-ear monitors. I think they're like kind of no name versions of like name brand ones. Yeah. Um, look, look at this. Look at this. Come on. That's tough. You can unplug the cable unplugs. So why? If the ca- why? If the cable goes bad, if you get it caught in something, you don't have to throw them all out. You just buy another little cable, 10 bucks, boom, there you go. Huh. Your headphones still work. You don't have to buy, you can keep these nice, good sounding headphones, and you don't have to just be like, crap, these headphones are bad, I have to throw them away. Or like if your cat chews on the cord. Yep. Which has never, ever happened in this house at all. But the reason I bring these up, and I'm using them, and they sound great, I, I'm, I'm using them as the monitor for my um my mixer, I was using these old little cheap JVC ones for like ages and ages, but they didn't work well with the mixer. So I got these and it had instructions. Instructions came oh. with this. Um, do you want to do you want to know the instructions for uh, for these headphones? It's fascinating. Sure. I promise you. Um, I mean, you're a man. Are you allowed to read the instructions? No, if your penis will fall off, don't do it. Well, you know what? I think worse happens. Listen to this. <laughs> um, step one, quality player. Quality music player, such as the lossless player, professional amplifier, HFI equipment, general music player, such as cell phones, computer, MP3 slash four. Step two. And, and the Iraq. Step two. Lossless music. Audio formats. It is rec- recommended that listen ape and flack lossless music or high quality to MP3 format music. Good audio. Headphones. Before they can output best quality. Step three, will the headset is fully driven pen? KZ easy with the use of the latest burn method. Complete burn in process can be. Step four, best sense hearing. Enjoy the sense of hearing. (laughs) The above steps are completed. Burn in has been completed. The next step is to enjoy the music of the moment. Remember the initial sense of hearing comparison. Thank you for supporting us. I wish you a happy life. <laughs> I shit you not. This entire booklet of, of, of instructions is just, uh, it's just it's so like, gibberish. Did the Google Translate person write those? I guess. I forget her name. You play her songs a lot. She translates songs. Translate to fails. Translate. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what it sounds like. It does. But I, you, like she translated an owner's manual 47 times and that's what you got. I had, I, they, they, they have like supposedly this diagram about how to hook the cables to the earphones. And I had to guess by the pictures because the captions beneath them are also gibberish. Um, uh, straight headphone inserted in the ear, correct wear, comfortable wear, good sound, insulation, performance. Okay. That's helpful. I mean, for best performance, you probably do want to put them in your ears. Yes. <laughs> it's just, um, yeah. It's just some of these is just is it's it's just so crazy. One yeah. one of the best ones I ever saw about that it was it was a set of directions for chopsticks and it said to put the choco stick between your forefinger and tenerb. I don't 
have it to nerve. <laughs> Maybe well. that's why I can't use chopsticks. I was tragically mm. born without a tenerb. Yeah, oh, we should nerve. show them your cat. Come here. Give what? me your cat. Oh. What is that? It's Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's cat is alive. Schrodinger's cat is dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. I love it. Alive. Dead. That is, that is the worst, and I love it. I got him this for Christmas one year because he's a psychologist. It, it, I started putting it in my office at work. I would just sit it behind my desk, and depending on whether or not I was having a good day or a bad, it was like this or this. It spent a lot of time like this. <laughs> the cat is dead and also my soul. <laughs> my soul is the cat. And that's why he got a new job and we moved to Colorado. Yeah. We learned an interesting thing about Colorado this week. I don't want to go on too long because I know we got to get started. Yeah. What did you learn? We learned this week that the weather predictions are bullshit. <laughs> they said we were going to get one hour of flurries yesterday. And it snowed all fucking day. <laughs> all day. Oh, you need to turn me down. Cause I, this is, you, we need to get you a pair of these because, yeah, I'm coming over your speakers quite a lot. So, yeah, you just, you, you don't bother checking the weather here. No. You just hope for the best. Yeah. All right, let's get to the nonsense because we've got a, a wonderful, oh my God, we have stuff this week. Each week... Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And good lord, the typing noises is loud yeah. back there. Oh, that's me. Yeah, that's wow. me this time. You know, amazing. Um, so our first one tonight is from the uh the category of uh, no good deed goes unpunished. Um, on the one hand, bless these people. They, that, that This is sweet of them that they did this. On the other hand, oh, you, 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 oh, you moron. Um, a man thought someone left a box of puppies on his lawn. Nope, they were bear cubs. Hmm. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, but look at them. <laughs> okay, yes, they're adorable, but they are also bears. Yes, but if you raise them from babies, no. you have an army of bears. Man came home to see a box of puppies that someone had left on his lawn. Called police to report the cute surprise, but when deputies took a look inside, they realized the pep the, the puppies weren't dogs after all. They were bear cubs. Not uncommon to find black bears in the county, but to find bear cubs in a cardboard box on your property, wrapped up in sweatshirts to keep them warm. Yeah, that's pretty strange. Look at their little tiny claws. <laughs> yes, they murder many things in their life. Um, the North Carolina Sheriff's Office explained they had responded to the man's call last month, who told them someone left the puppies outside his house. The man explained he was gone for just a short amount of time. The animals were there when he returned. Uh, Sheriff Jones said the person who dropped off the cubs probably stumbled across them, put them in a box, and simply left them in the man's house when they realized they couldn't keep them. Do you know what that means? Hmm. There is a pissed off mama bear somewhere. Yes. In that, <laughs> that is the first. That is why I'm saying, oh, you idiot. Because someone stole her babies. I'm surprised we don't have a similar story this week about a bear on a rampage. Yeah. I just how seriously like you you train them, you bottle feed them, and then they love you and they're loyal to you, and then boom, instant bear army. Who's fucking with you ever? It's not gentle Ben, Tara. That's not how that works. It's it's more like there's this old uh cartoon of the far side. I don't know if you remember this one. Um and it's uh, a dude sitting by sitting at a table. Uh he's got a bear in his cabin. Well, you know, the Coonskin cap, why not? And one of his hands is a hook. And uh, he says, uh, we, we, we've got us a deal. Uh, she don't wake me up at night, and I don't try to pull her food bowl away until uh, she's done with it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, haven't you seen videos of, like, lions 
that had people care for them when they were cubs and years later they know those people and they hug them and are very gentle yes but those are lions you could have bears <laughs> bears don't A work this way bear army bears don't work this way your house is never getting broken into ever bears don't work that way though well, how do you know? Have you ever raised bears? Dude, I saw a bear today. We went to Charlestown Landing, local zoo. That, there is a black bear there. He is three feet tall and 500 pounds. He is a furry tank. Yes. And wouldn't you want a small army of those? <laughs> You're hung up on this whole idea. No, I can train them. They'll be fine. It doesn't work that way. You don't have to train them if they love you. You're like, you're like reminding me of Dr. Herbert West from Reanimator. You're just going to keep trying and trying no matter the consequences. Tara is like a homicidal Disney princess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we have another one um, this week, which is I. Oh, you fucking idiots. Yeah. I, I I remember doing um our our all, all the LARP and convention stuff over the years. We we were a bunch of smart asses. Yeah. And whenever we used to do stuff, it was like we we got the idea that when we were doing like um bad things, no one would notice because so we kind of like amped them up, you know, just as our own little in jokes. Uh, especially at the hotels when we were screwing with the straights, um. Uh, and the after parties were legendary. This is a couple of people who were thought they could were had their own little in joke to screw with the straights. Except the straights they were trying to screw with uh, were the cops. Package labeled "bag full of drugs" leads to Florida arrests. Yeah. <laughs> Two men charged with drug tra trafficking could have done a better job hiding their wares than using a bag labeled "bag full of drugs." Ian Simmons and Joshua Reinhardt, both 34, were pulled over in Santa Rosa County on Saturday after a trooper clocked them going 95 on Interstate 10, the state's panhandle. Um, the Florida, uh, the trooper determined that Reinhardt was the subject of an active felony warrant for violation of probation. So let's start off here. You're going almost 100 miles an hour on a 75 mile an hour zone. Now, I know it's I-10 and nobody gives a shit, but someone might. And um, you have an active felony warrant for probation violation. So that's and already... a bag full of drugs, clearly labeled bag full of drugs. Santa Rosa County Sheriff's deputy arrived to assist and a canine alerted to the presence of contraband in the vehicle. Authorities found approximately 75 grams of methamphetamine, 1.36 kilograms of date rape drug GHB, one gram of cocaine, 3.6 grams of fentanyl, 15 MDMA tablets and drug paraphernalia. At wow. least, well, you got to hand it to them. At least they, they are really strict about that um, accuracy and advertising thing. Yeah, that that is that is truthful. That um, look at See, all the what you do is, yes, you get the bag full of drugs bag. Uh huh. But then you just fill it with like tissues and tampons and you put your drugs in the bag labeled makeup. No, no, no. You, you fill the bag full of drugs with like allergy meds and headache pills and, yeah. and, and Dayquil and stuff like that. That's the irony of it. You don't put the full. 1.36 kilograms of GHB. Jesus Christ, dude. There's a serious combo platter of uppers and downers there, too. Right? Like meth, GHB, cocaine, fentanyl, fentanyl. molly. <laughs> I, I, good God. This is, this, this is reading like a freaking Hunter S. Thompson article. Seriously. <laughs> Care to stop here? This is Florida. Um, I mean, that's good advice. Yeah. Hey, Simba. <laughs> Dragon grunting. Dragon is asking the channel says what? No bath salts. Big bag of bath salts. 
1.36 kilograms of GH. My God. And I bet they thought it was really fucking hilarious. Yeah, the bag. Putting that in the bag full of drugs bag. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Hey, look at the picture. They have two bag full of drugs bags. Two Which means they definitely shot, thought that shit was hilarious. They did. Because the other guy was like, bro, I got to get one of those two. This this is when your court appointed attorney just sits there. Yeah. I could have gone into private practice, you know. I could have done slip and falls. Yeah. But no. Chaser. Here I am pro bono for you schmucks. All right. Um next up, two of the two oh good god. Just special little assholes. Every time he comes in the room, he grunts. He is. He's out there just... Simba? <laughs> yeah. He always has to announce his presence with a loud grunt. Um, so I'm sure, I'm sure you and everyone else by now has heard of the coronavirus. Yes. And I want... it's This is not the epidemic that's sweeping the planet. This is not like Captain Trips. It's it's a concern. It's an issue, but still, people are are worried about it. People don't are are, and it's it's sure. for damn sure. If your uh, respiratory uh, system is compromised or you're older, it's deadly. Is what yeah. we found out so far. So it is of concern to people, especially, and it can be spread. That's why these assholes they they need special place in hell, special fucking place in hell. Man claiming to have coronavirus forces plane to return to Toronto. Come on. Two hours into a WestJet flight from Toronto to Montego Bay, Jamaica. So you're going to a happy place. Yeah. Passengers had their trips unexpectedly cut short on Monday after a passenger claimed he had the coronavirus. At some point during flight WS2702, the man stood up, announced that he was recently in China and contracted the disease. The account- Why? The announcement was shared by the flight crew to the captain, and a decision was made for the plane to turn back to Pearson. Um, we were just over Florida when all of a sudden we felt the plane do a dramatic turn. Uh, flight attendants came in, gave him a mask. They were almost there! Yep, they gave him a mask and gloves and just told him that he had to move to the black of the plane. Captain for the passengers that because of the incident, they couldn't land in Jamaica or the U.S. and had to return to Toronto. The captain believed it was a hoax. Yeah, that's that. That is the annoying part. All right. So you're the captain of this plane. You're just trying to do your job and you get a jokester. But because of protocol, yeah. you have to take this crap seriously. We're all going back to Toronto. Everyone's schedule is screwed up. Everyone's vacation is borked. All because one dude thought he was funny. And like, why? What was the point? I don't know. Did you think they weren't going to quarantine you? The plane landed. The man, 29 year old from Thornhill, was arrested and charged with mischief, which I didn't know you could be arrested for. But yeah, criminal mischief. It's a thing. Hmm. Uh, He's scheduled to appear in court on March 9th. So did everybody on the plane get to punch him in the dick (laughs) as they walked him out? It's probably me that scene from Airplane. You remember that yeah. one with the, the shaking lady? They go down the line. There's the dude with the with the freaking bat waiting. Yeah. <laughs> what a dick! Why and what? Yeah, why? What's funny about that? What? Not only what's funny about this. What did you gain? Right. What were you trying to get out of it? Wait. What? What could possibly? What in the hell? Like, you don't get to go to Jamaica either now. You don't get to Jamaica. you're going to jail. Yes. Jail is not Jamaica. No. I know they both start with the same two letters. Yeah. But they're very different. What? Just. So everybody on the plane. Yeah, they added. They, they tried to get everybody to two flight. Two flights were canceled due to the incident. Mm. Oh, after you even going to jail, they're going to sue you. The airplane company is going to sue you. Everybody on that plane should be allowed to sue him. Oh, that some people probably will. White probably will. And the airline as well. But it's just why? Why? It's how? Yeah. Yeah. Even one of the people at, on the plane said it was 
Uh, I guess this guy thought it was a funny joke, but it's just we really weird. We were all very frustrated to just displace 240 people. We lost a day of our like vacation. Two thirds of the way there. <sighs> You're like, going... So it's not like you got on the plane and were like, oh shit, I forgot my flip flops. <laughs> I better make them turn the plane around. <laughs> Uh, but wait, Tara, but wait, there's more. Welcome to, for fuck's sake. Caution, I have the coronavirus prank in Illinois Walmart causes 10,000 in damage. How? You'll see. Two teens have been charged after pulling a costly coronavirus prank at a Walmart in Joliet, Illinois. Uh, Tyler D. Wallace, 19, walked into the Walmart Sunday afternoon wearing a handmade sign on his back that said, Caution, I have the coronavirus. Wallace put on a yellow medical mask and began spraying Lysol on <sighs> products and produce. Wallace turned himself into the police Thursday and was charged with misdemeanor counts of disorderly conduct, retail theft, and criminal trespass. A 17-year-old boy who was in the store with Wallace was arrested on misdemeanor counts of disorderly conduct. It appears to have been a prank that went too far. Again, what's the punchline? Exactly. How, how, who, what's the Her, der, I made people think I was sick and I ruined all the produce. Walmart <laughs> estimated the loss of the produce to be over $7,300 and cleanup costing over 2400 Yeah, because that entire area, yeah. the, you're not, so you can't use that around the produce. It's not, Lysol is not rated for produce. You and to, they probably have to treat the whole area of the yep. store as though he really did have coronavirus. Yep. And sanitize everything. Yep. Because even if you know somebody's an idiot, you can't fuck around. <sighs> I, 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 it's, like, why is that funny? I don't know. I don't understand. I don't. I do. I. What's your goal? Do I not understand humor? No, I don't, like, are we no, it's the old? children who are wrong. Like, are we just that old that we don't understand what's funny anymore? Cause... No, Tara, it's the children who are wrong. Okay. Because I don't even like, what do you get out of that? Because we're flipping the script on that meme. It's the children <laughs> who are wrong. Because good guy, I mean, even when I was 19, that sort of shit wasn't funny. Yeah. Like we say it all the time, teenagers are assholes. If you're currently a teenager, I'm sorry, you're an asshole. You'll grow Get out of it. it. It's not your fault. You you might end up just fine. Most people you're grow out of it. You're a giant machine running on hormones, and you're an asshole. And you're probably going to outgrow it. Eventually. Yeah. But, yeah, man, I mean, the, the kind of pranks we did, you know, I mean... I like got in a popcorn fight in a movie theater and I look on back on that now and I cringe because somebody had to clean, clean that, that up. up. Right. And I feel bad about it. Right. But I didn't destroy seven grand worth of produce and scare the crap out of people. Right. Because I know it's like, oh, maybe someone's foolish enough to take it seriously, but you never know. Yeah. Some people are just twisted enough to do stuff like that for real. Welcome to the 21st century. Ah, uh, next up is, um, oh my. The internet it has presented a lot of cottage industries out there. If, if you don't know what the term cottage industry means, it means an industry sprouts up and then kind of like lampreys around a shark. Other little <laughs> industries, kind of like, yeah. oh, I don't know, making videos on YouTube. Um, like Netflix just did a whole documentary about cat influencers on social media. Right, that's a cottage industry. Famous cats and people who are living off their cats. And you have to understand, people people can, you gotta respect the hustle for some of them, because it is work. They are working hard. Yeah. I This is definitely work for me. I mean, I've got years of therapy I've been racking up from this <laughs> damn show. Um, however, sometimes the hustle is not enough to justify what you are doing. Oh, lordy. Illinois woman accused of running QVC of stolen clothes is sentenced on theft charge. Chesterfield, Missouri, 
Authorities believe an East St. Louis woman, uh, Illinois, uh, with a, a history of theft cases, ran an online boutique out of her basement where she was selling stolen merchandise. 29-year-old Twana Trotter is behind bars after pleading guilty to a separate 2018 stealing case at a Walmart in Chesterville. Investigators say Trotter has hit most of all of the retail areas in Chesterfield, Missouri, just across the Mississippi River from East St. Louis. Uh, Sergeant Keith Ryder of the Chesterfield Police Department say investigators found roughly $20,000 of stolen merchandise in Trotter's East St. Louis home. Ryder said Trotter's and others stole merchandise from many stores. Then Trotter would try to sell the goods on Facebook. Quote, she basically set up a boutique in her basement where she would advertise what she had and show them on her live video. And I guess hoping for people to come and buy those products from her. Why wouldn't they just go to the store? Because <laughs> she was selling, probably selling them at rock bottom prices. True. Yeah, she was probably selling them for less. Much less. Because when your overhead is zero, you know, just it's good. I, the thing she didn't seem to realize was um, Ryder said his detectives would actually watch Trotter's Facebook live sessions to see what she was selling. Yeah, the police have the Internet, too. That's right. It's not like it's not like, you can't watch if you're a cop. You got to tell me if you're a cop, your cop you can't watch. Yeah, no. Cops aren't allowed. They're allowed to use Facebook too. That's that's the law. Cop cops can't you can't be a cop on Facebook. That's the law. It's it, Facebook's in international waters. I mean, God, at least bring that shit over to Etsy and call it like upcycled. <laughs> right? Then you could charge more. I mean, just it's just it's ter our prices are so low they're practically a steal. Does that mean she was running a theft shop? Loop is 66. Well done. I just, it, what's the opposite of goodwill? Yeah. Instead of five below, it's five fingers. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, how do you, how, I just, no, it'll be fine. Nobody will see it. We'll be fine. I kind of want to see one of these live streams now. I want to see how they are advertising it. Oh man, have you ever seen like one of the leggings live streams? No. Oh, the there's there's a whole industry now of scamming women into trying to turn all your friends and family into customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the big ones is really overpriced leggings in horrendous patterns. But they, you don't get any control over what they send you, size or pattern. Like, they just fucking send what they send, and you have to try and unload it. Uh. So if you don't know anybody who's an extra small who wants snake print leggings, sucks to be you. You're out that 30 bucks. Sounds like a pyramid scheme. That is. It, it, is, it is. Yes, it is. Multi-level marketing. But yeah, marketing. they sell them on Facebook Live, and it's just an hour of her holding up leggings to the camera and... No, I, I would. You know, if someone's doing that, I want to see some putting some some pizzazz into it. <laughs> Jazz that crap up. Get yourself like one of those signs. Get like some ringing phones in the background. Get some of your friends. They just can't to... because they're in up to their neck debt buying all the fucking overpriced inventory that they now have to unload. No, just get get, get like some friends your relative in the background and give them like old style telephones and just like have them talk like, mouth mouth in the background like stuff's going on. Get like some cheap graphics and like copy of yeah. OBS. Yeah, you just, you gotta work it, baby. You gotta work it. But you gotta razzle dazzle. Uh, I just, just, but you can't put the crime on Facebook. No. Now, now, if you're, if you're telling people that vaccines don't work, then you can put the crime on Facebook. Yeah. That's if you run one of those pyramid schemes, then you can put the crime on Facebook. You have to have a lot of money before you can advertise your crimes and get right, away with them. Right. Um, Coop. Mm, excuse me. Um, so this next one, this our last story this week, uh, Indianapolis. I have. 
Have you ever been at a job and suddenly there's a terrible smell coming from somewhere? Retail or any, any, I had this happen when I was working the computer lab at the college. When I worked at Old Navy, we used to have a kid who came in and set off stink bombs all the time. We had one in, 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 in the, I was in the top floor of the, of the, the building that had the computer lab in it. And we got this smell going through the building. And the thing about being an employee in a building is you're not in charge of the maintenance. Nope. You're not like the janitor or the, any of those staff. So you can't do anything about it. Yeah, you have no control over your environment. Well, the people in this next story, they had a bad smell and they tried to do something about it. They just were imbeciles. <laughs> Auto repair shop learns tough le lesson when dealing with gas fumes. They're okay. Their business is not. Now oh, listen to no. this. When gas fumes got too intense at an Indianapolis auto repair shop Tuesday, workers thought they had the perfect solution. It didn't work. Instead, a fire that heavily damaged the business broke out. According they to tried Indi to solve gas fumes with fire. According <laughs> to Indi Indianapolis Fire Department Battalion Chief Rita Reith, uh, workers at the Auto Center store on East 38th Street had emptied a gas tank on a car and put the gas in a bucket. When the fumes got too strong, they lit incense to help with the odor. Come on! Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, man, do you got any of that incense that you have in the other Why night? Why do you even have incense at an auto body shop? Why is it there? <sighs> Why is it even there? See, here's the thing about gas fumes. All right, gasoline, everybody thinks, you know, you put the, you shoot the gas tank and it explodes. That's not how gasoline works. That is the stupidest misconception from films ever. Gasoline, the liquid in its liquid form is not the combustible part. It can burn, but that's not what causes the explosions. What causes the explosions are the vapors the fast uh, evaporation and mixing with the air. If you have a heat source and those fumes waft over to it, you get the proper mixture of air and fumes. Kablooey! Now here's the miraculous part. Um, the workers escaped unharmed and called 911. It took 40 minutes to bring the blaze under control. The fire did not spread, but the damage to the auto repair shop was heavy. So. Um, everyone is well, they're fired. <laughs> yeah. Um, huh. I didn't even mean that one. You did, but you did it anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, good God. Look at that. That is just yikes. Um, yeah, that's the other thing. If they're employees, they don't own that shit. Jesus. I, how do you? How do you not work with cars and not get fire plus gas equal bad? Keep fire away from gas. Well, just, yeah, don't have gas. For one thing, don't have gas indoors. Because you know all. how gasoline makes the car run? Exploding. Right. When the engine heats up, it creates a little tiny combustion. A boom. That's literally how it works. <laughs> God, I'll just. I, these people were fixing cars. Can you believe this? That's the scary part. I can because I've had some fucking adventures. Oh, I remember one time, uh, one of my friends, one of uh, our old Cami friends that I was uh, rooming with in um, in Savannah. She went. She got her car. She took her car in. Got an oil change. Came back, and then a day or two later, her engine seized up. And it turns out they left the drain pan on the oil open. So oh. all the oil just leaked oh, out of the God. bottom of her car. I yeah. had, my dad had an old mechanic that worked for him for years that would do. He brought several cars back from totaled. I learned to drive on a car that had been totaled four times before it got <laughs> to me. And Rod would just bring it back from the dead. You know, he was the Dr. Frankenstein of cars. 
And I had to go get my old Buick repaired at one point. And when I finally got it fixed, they were like, you know, because the fan went, I guess. I had no heat all winter. It was great. Mm. And they were like, you know, you had the fan in there was for entirely the wrong model of car. Like it wasn't even for a Buick. And I was like, huh, I wonder how that happened. <laughs> That's so weird. I knew exactly how that happened. Yeah. This is but it's scary. These people who didn't know the basic, you keep ventilation, even without the fire. Okay. Even without the fire, you <sighs> keep an area with fumes ventilated. Yeah. How many brain cells did y'all have been losing over the, well, I guess we got to answer that right there. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. We have our answer for how this happened. Oh, a lot. You've been slowly brain damaging yourself for, for decades, likely. So yeah. Oh, that, for now is politics. <laughs> Can you just imagine being the owner and pulling up to the and building? That call. Yeah. Because here's the thing: there's the owner of the business and there's the owner of the building. Mm -hmm. Those are not always the same people. Yeah. Oh no. That looks like a strip mall, too. So that that might be. Oh, no. Well, the article said it didn't catch to adjoining businesses, which is good. Yeah, but that one dude. But they oh, all had to no. evacuate. They all lost that day's business anyway. Oh, because I promise no. you the fire department was like, no, no, just keep making sandwiches, Subway. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. Don't worry about don't worry about the fire. Just you can send your customers over to watch. Maybe you know, just charge them extra dinner and a show. Uh okay, so, so the, the first thing we learned this week is um Fire bad. Fire bad. <laughs> We're having to keep it really basic. <laughs> having to, 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 to jack it down. How do you why incense? Why not even you could have gotten Febreze or some shit. Right? Know, I know you I know that bathroom has air air freshener in it. Look, it's an auto body shop. They probably have a wall of air fresheners. <laughs> It's probably a whole wall of those fucking pine trees. Uh, let's clear out the gas fume smell with fire. That'll yeah, work. I mean, it did. Hey, man, whenever I used to fart, I'd light a match, and that cleaned it out just fine. I don't know why. It suddenly... didn't smell like gasoline in there anymore. Hey, hey, man, I don't it know smelled why... like fire. <laughs> don't know why I'm suddenly turning into Iggy Pop on that one. Yeah, hey man. <laughs> yeah, we had a fire, just a little match. Yeah. Um we learned this week that police have the internet too. Yes, they do. Um they 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 do in fact they have the internet. It's not like th there are no special there are no special Facebook police who have to do Facebook. There are actual real police. Yeah. It's it's just We've learned that natural disasters can bring out the best and the absolute stupidest in people. Like you have a plague that is spreading and people think it's funny. You know, I used to, I, I would, every so often, I used to, I used to read um, Stephen King's The Stand, which here's a weird thing to do. Uh, I used to note every time I would read Stephen King's The Stand, I would get sick. It was. It would freak me out almost every time. It was probably I was like reading every few it's years. Probably Pavlovian, yeah. yeah. But um, I you would note it. I, you'd read the stand. And there's all like all, all these people doing ridiculous crap, and you're like, nobody would do that. That's not realistic. And here's people. We're not even dying of this disease. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I recently read Chuck Wendig's Wanderers, which is a great book, by the way. No, I haven't. And read. It, part of it has to do with a plague that hits and. Yeah, you. I watch the news now, and I'm like, I really hope he doesn't have the same superpower as William Gibson, where shit he writes just comes true. Well, William Gibson wrote it, but the shit he wrote came true stoop. Oh. Exactly. Oh. So I really oh. hope Chuck Wendig is not another, like, sci-fi prophet, because that would suck for us. Oh. Uh. We've learned this week that truth in advertising uh, should not uh, extend to your criminal enterprises. No. Um. Oh my God, bag drugs! What the hell? 
What the hell? What are you in for? <clears throat> Bag full of drugs? <laughs> Quite literally. And finally, we've learned, Tara, you can't raise bears. No. I'm telling you, if you got them as babies... You can't raise bears. It would work. It would no. not. See, even yeah, Dan on Twitter this week, I asked, like, jokingly, just in case a moose shows up at my door, what do moose eat? And, like, 10 or 20 people just honestly answered me and told me what to feed the moose. And I was both charmed and a little worried about that. <laughs> And then there were a couple people that like don't feed the moose terror. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But it's good for me to know what they eat in why, case they show up. Why would you why okay, why do you need to know what they would eat in case they show up? So I can feed them. But they told you not to. Well, yeah, but if they just show up and they look hungry, you're not gonna be a dick. <laughs> I, I, for, I, I never read the Miss Manners that said you have to be a good host to wildlife. You forget I moved here from a place where I had several families of birds, morbidly obese squirrels, <laughs> several very fat raccoons and possums, and a fucking turtle. And I was feeding all of them. <laughs> There's going to be like a 700 pound moose panting in your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine my cats? <sighs> When the moose comes to the door every day for his lettuce, all three cats in the window just like. 